And then this one uh, came by way of Colonel Patricia Jackson Kelly. And I've had a lot of requests for me to retell this joke. It says a young boy was sitting on his porch just stuffing his mouth with candy as fast as he could. And a man passing by saw what he was doing and he said, young man, you know you're going to spoil your dinner. The little boy said, yeah, I know about that. He said, my grandpa lived to be 102. And the man said, your grandfather lived uh, to be 102 by eating candy? He said, no, by minding his business. <laughs> I believe, therefore, I speak. <laughs> the seed of perfection is hidden within, our Ernest Holmes reminds us. He says, this original life is infinite. It is good. It is filled with peace. It is the essence of purity. It is the ultimate of intelligence. It is power. It is law. It is life. And it is in us in that inner sanctuary of our own nature, hidden perhaps from objective gaze, nestles the seed of perfection. As she said, God is the best part of us, and we need to learn to maximize the best part of us and not minimize the best part of us. Ernest Holmes goes on to say, in our ignorance of the truth, we have misused the highest power we possess. And so great is that power, so complete is our freedom in it, so absolute the dominant law through it, that the misuse of this power has brought upon us the very conditions from which we suffer. We are bound because we are first free. The power which appears to bind us is the only power in the universe that can free us. This is why Jesus summed up his whole philosophy in this statement. It is done unto you as you believe. The great teacher looked so deeply into the nature that she revealed her fundamental simplicity to him. That belief is who I am. Heaven and hell symbolizes what we think, our consciousness. And so we suffer not because suffering is imposed upon us, but because we are ignorant of our true nature. Ernest Holmes said, believe that the spirit is all there is. He believed that the entire universe, seen and unseen, past, present, and future, whether experienced as thought or material demonstration, as mineral and plant, animal and human, is completely, ultimately, and solely of this one indivisible essence that can only be defined or described as pure creative consciousness as one mind expressing its infinite and unbound capacity for creativity through the consciousness of the individualized mind and matter the seed of perfection is hidden within each of us may we utilize it to the fullest Ernest Holmes asked each of us if you knew, would you and I be willing to create joy, health, wealth, and success in our lives? If knowledge was shared with you on how to do just that, could you accept it? Would you expect it? Would you use that knowledge? And we'll say yes, real easy. Our thinking influences our experiences. Thoughts, which are seeds, and those thoughts and seeds planted are things. I believe, therefore, I speak. Thoughts are surrounded by our feelings. I'm talking about what we label as worthy or not, big or small, cute or not, the labels that we place upon ourselves as well as others. But see, God created us in its image and likeness. So our labeling is crossing out what God said and who we truly are. We're always looking at somebody or something and putting our two cents in instead of looking beyond appearances and seeing the presence of God. 
in all challenges, in all people, in all things. If we can just do that, our world would be much better. All of this that's going on. And Wednesday, when Dr. Ron was doing our prayer and visioning, because we were celebrating Unity World Day of Prayer on Wednesday and Thursday, and what he said is, our world is injured. And it's injured, it's hurting. All of these earthquakes and fires and catastrophes are based on our feelings and what we've placed in the world. And we can see it through global warming. We can see it through all the things that's happening. God entrusted this world to us to take good care of it, but we're falling short. And that's because all the negativity that goes on, all the judging and criticizing that goes on makes the world what it is because we're talking about energy and vibration. So we got to learn to turn this thing around. Love yourself so that you can give that love out. A lot of people don't love themselves and they can't give you what they don't have. What they not, have not acknowledged and a lot of people have not experienced real love. And that's why, thank God, we got God. If we turn to that love, pure love, we can feel it from that perfection that's been placed within us. In the pool of thinking, remember God is always present, but cannot be in the room of our negative judging and criticizing because it's unnatural. It's not natural to talk about God's children, including self. It's not natural to misjudge and criticize. That's not natural. And that's why nature is trying to talk to us. Nature is screaming at us to get it right, children of God. We got to unlock the stream of consciousness that, as Reverend Horatius said, whatever the question, love is the answer. Even when people don't give it back to you because you got to think they don't know how. And so we can't join that company we have to rise up higher and give it out. Be that example as Jesus, the master teacher, taught us to be an example. You know he dealt with a lot of mess from people, but he stayed anchored in love because he knew that right where my father is, so am I. Right where God is, here I am. So in the midst of people talking bad to you. Right where I am, God is. And then it can't hurt you. Why? Because you're covered. Covered with love, with strength, with courage, with wisdom. Be against no thing. Utilize unconditional love because God is good, loving, whole, perfect, complete. I believe, therefore, I speak. Therefore, no thing will come against me. God is love, and love should be all there is. And that takes for us to turn our thinking around. We've been infused by teachers and parents and friends and neighbors and husbands and wives to think this way. And we walk around this world in our lives, wounded and hurt, holding all of the past stuff at the seat of our consciousness. And when something happens, it comes up. And that's why it's so important to empty every night before you lay your head down, to embrace God every morning that you open your eyes. Because he held you all night, everything had to go right for you to wake up and open your eyes in the morning. If we really look at the whole of life, God did this thing called life, a good and peaceful, joyful way of living. And this teaching, all teaching should teach us to be free, but some teaching 
binds you because they need you to keep coming back. They don't want you to be free. They want you to keep chasing Jesus. But we don't have to chase anything. We are what God is, made in that image and likeness. So if you're not teaching freedom, you're not doing God's work. You're not utilizing God's words. Because God's words is always loving, inspiring, kind, healing, inspirational. That's what we created out of, and that's what we're supposed to be using, and that's why our body is carrying disease. Because we're not walking in our light. We're not recognizing God every moment of every day. Because we're so busy looking elsewhere, looking out there and labeling and talking. What do you believe? And then what are you speaking? God will work for us as long as we let God work through us. That dominion, choice, and freedom that was bestowed upon us gives us the right to live our lives any way we want. But then don't complain. Because whatever we're holding in mind, whatever we're speaking out of our mouth, whatever we're holding in the heart center, that's what you're going to attract to you. We are energy. We are vibration. And so we are a magnet for what comes to us. And when we don't like what shows up, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You thought it to you, think it away. Sometimes we think we don't need God. Sometimes we don't even think about God until something happens. Then we're begging, please, 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 God. Then we're wondering, why me? It's going to come to everybody, but we have the tools and the power to say, get thee behind me. I and my father are one. I am made in the image and likeness of a power that allows me to do whatever I want to do. To get rid of dis-ease, to recover, because if something don't happen to you, you don't have a testimony. As T.D. Jake said, one day he went to a, um, a seminar and one person was talking about how good their life was. Everything was just good. And T.D. Jake said, well, then you can't talk to me. If you ain't been through nothing, you can't tell me nothing. <laughs> so when something shows up in your life, you have the power and the tools to work it out. And then you're able to tell somebody what God has done for you. And the only way that God can do it for you is by doing it through you. Spiritual principles is given to us to utilize the greater good, our decision to choose from what we shall serve. And every circumstance is to remind us that with God, we cannot fail. God spoke all of it was done and completed because all things are possible. And we truly have to believe that. Those are the things that we truly got to work on. This is a spiritual thing that we're doing here, so it takes spiritual practice. Clearly, God, Lord, was, is, and will always be the substance, the source, provider, wisdom, the answer, the healer, the solver, the counselor, the advocator. Our love, God is, for it does not question itself, cause, thought. It is this time is for us to truly believe, therefore speak unto any circumstances, challenges, or needs. Believing that God hears you always and that God will answer according to your belief. Your belief. And if you're believing that you're undeserving, it can't come to you. If you're believing that you're not worthy of all of God's goodness, it can't come to you. 
All your blessings and gifts has been sitting in the warehouse waiting on you to recognize it. We were called forth to be victorious, and that is God in expression. When we're victorious, when we're overcome challenges, dis-ease, losing our loved ones, becoming older, when we can conquer that, then we can truly live. We're only half living. We got to fully immerse ourselves in what we say we believe. And with this teaching, it is so simple that we're making it harder and harder because we can't believe that it's this simple. Can't believe that just by thinking and knowing and trusting that I can be healed, mind, body, and soul. First, the mind has to be healed of error thinking. And then the body and the body of your affairs, your relationship will get that energy. Get that vibration that I believe, therefore, I'm speaking into my circumstance. I'm speaking unto my body. I'm speaking that the wisdom of God is flowing through my consciousness. So I have the answer. I have the solution. I am led, guided, and directed so I know which way to go. Ladies and gentlemen, we were created out of this self-knowing power presence and that's who we are. Immerse yourself in it. Talk to yourself every day. As Mary J. Blige say, look in the mirror and say, good morning, gorgeous. No makeup, no hair, whatever. Love yourself from the inside out. This is an inside job we're talking about. And whatever is going on on the inside eventually will show up on the outside. We can dress it up and spray it all we want to. But it will show up. That's how God created this world. To believe can be understood many ways. In this teaching, we look at it at the metaphysical meaning, an inner acceptance of an idea as true, closely related to faith, and can, can function both consciously as well as unconsciously. Also, believing can lead to understanding, the ability to spiritually see and hear, which allows us to understand and know. For in the physical world, most times seeing comes before believing. I believe it when I see it. But that's not how God created the world. God believed and spoke. Let there be. And he said, let there be light. And what that light represents is understanding. Let there be understanding because when we understand something, then we know how to work it fully and completely. We hear this stuff every week, but yet have not truly grasped it yet. We're so busy admiring those that seem to have got it, but you got the same stuff as those we admire. It's about practicing, practicing the presence, allowing the spirit of God to utilize you because we carry it around. We are walking little G's, housing in our soul the very power and essence of God. And all we have to do is utilize it and not let it sit like I say so often, like our exercise equipment, just sit in the corner with piles of clothes on it. Ain't utilizing it. And that's the same thing we do with this teaching. That's how we spiritually grow, is by staying immersed in it. Practice makes powerful. Believing to accept something as true, genuine, real, to have a firm, wholehearted conviction, such as regarding the power and presence of God as a fact, believing that it is, that's it, and that's all. Believing is both mental and emotional, deeply rooted within, and those beliefs will dictate our speaking and our actions. 
Proverbs 4.22. It says, God's word is medicine, for they are life to those who find them. And that's our asking, seeking, and knocking. There is health to all of their flesh. Proverbs 15.4, kind words are good medicine, but deceitful words harms and hurts, diminishes our awareness and recognition of the presence of our creator. Deceitful words, harming words. That's why we're getting all of this in the world. The mental illness is at an all-time high. And we don't have many facilities to house them like we used to. It needs us to see beyond that. We're so busy talking about them, and we're not praying for them, that those prayers penetrate and they awaken. Boom, there's light. I understand that I have the power of God within me. That's all of our unhoused people need. People that are angry, people whose hearts are heavy with sadness, they need to awaken to the power of God that's within. Because God looks at all of his children the same. Gave us all of him the same. It's only how we utilize it, when we use it, that makes the difference. I believe, therefore, I speak. What are we speaking? When we speak healing words, we offer fruit from the tree of life. For no word of God, good, is void of healing power. God's creative power, not ours, but that one that called us forth for its glory. We are so used to family members not loving us, shortchanging us, not paying us back, not being truthful with us, that we are fearful, we are angry. We don't call somebody for a year just because of a misunderstanding. And when you don't do that, that means you intentionally are holding something. And when you're holding hurt and anger, resentment, something is happening in your body. That energy has to go somewhere. And it has to do something. So it comes out as dis-ease. The big C word, it comes out as rash. When you see something on the outside, that means something went on on the inside. Stuff don't just show up from the outside. Everything is done from the inside. God's creative power, utilizing it for the greater good. That's what shows up more of the same when you're thinking the same. You have people that do the same thing the same way, but expecting a different outcome. If it keeps coming up that way and you don't like it, that means you need to change something. And the first thing to change is your mind. Remember, God's word is creative power. Given the ability to think, we put things in motion. Then there is movement. It shall show up according to what we placed. And we can always liken that to a garden. Whatever you plant, whatever you plant, it has to come up. And especially when you're thinking about it and talking about it, that's how you're nurturing it. And just as a garden, if we don't tend to this right here, weeds are going to pop up. I mean, that, that God created everything similar. So we got to realize what we're working with. Utilize nature to really learn about yourself. Our word, belief, is our evidence. The light of our words can and will dispel darkness. This program, as you can see, this is the symbol that Ernest Holmes came up with, and it represents the creative process in the individual. The circle represents infinite spirit, God, where there's no beginning and no end. There, this area represents the self-consciousness, mind of spirit, the source of all thought, 
The curve represents the ongoing creative process, and the line represents spirit experiencing its creation. The symbol is used to illustrate the idea, the descent of spirit into form, which describes how the creative process moves from the mind, spirit through the law, soul, and into form. This process is often described as polarity and moves from cause to effect. Thoughts surrounded by feelings becomes beliefs. And our beliefs are creative of our experiences of conditions and forms and effects. So it's up to us to develop beliefs on goodness, healing, givingness, all of that that God is, the attributes of God. So this is consciousness, cause, spirit, being immersed into subconscious, a vessel, a medium, a conduit. And then this is, represents the soul of us. And then here is form, effect, body. Whatever you're praying for, you get. But it's going to be placed on how you utilize this right here. Cause. Our thinking is the cause of something to come. I believe. Therefore, I speak. What are we believing? That circle represents the infinite spirit, the one. The circle contains three sections, representing them three aspects, almost like trinity of light. The father, the son, the daughter, and the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the action of God and the son or the daughter. You get that? So whatever you're placing, in spiritual mind, based on your belief, based on what you're thinking about, based on what you're holding in that heart center, that's what you're creating. And the law is no respecter of person. It's not going to say, oh, but they nice, or oh, they meant this. The law is going to do exactly what you did. Because that means if we planted carriage, that means that if the law didn't work precisely, we would get some string beans. So it has to take what you put in it, just as the soil takes the seed and brings back to it that that was intended. And so that's how we're utilizing our consciousness. Because we are made in the image and likeness of God, so we're working with that power in that presence. And so whatever word, seed, we plant in the universal soil, that's what's going to come up. So quit talking about people including self. Leave us alone. And be with God. Talk with God. If you're going to have any conversation, let it be with God or about God. And the more you talk about it, the easier it will become. And the next thing you will say to yourself, you know what, I haven't gossiped up in about a year. God's medicine is to be spoken by mouth at least three times a day until unwavering faith is established. Within, then spoken every day to maintain faith. If circumstances appear to grow worse, double the dosage. There are no harmful side effects. Within the word of God, in Isaiah 55, 11 and 57, 19, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing where I send it. Your word. And then 57 says, I, you and me, create the fruit of the lips, peace and more peace to them that is far off and to them that is near, says the Lord. I will heal them. May we return God's word back to him. God gave us the ability to be kind, so get rid of all of that stuff that we've heard, that people told us that we couldn't. Teachers and parents that didn't know, they didn't know no better. You can respect it, you don't have to accept it. You have your own individual consciousness, so we can't blame it on anybody. 
Spend your days emptying out the old, making room for the new. If we turn God, return God's word back to us, giving it voice, which I will create the fruit of our word, it shall not return void. That's the way it works. A mindset, a belief, our word, and our actions. The psalmist says on, in 107.20, he sent his word and healed them, delivered them from their destruction. Psalms 119.105 says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. So we have a way to do this thing that we call our life. You plant words of inspiration, kindness, love, and joy, and it will return to you full, a harvest of just that. Empty out, make room for new. Make room for new. What do you believe in your program every week? In this teaching, Ernest Holmes says, we believe in God, the living spirit almighty, one indestructible, absolute, and self-existent cause. This one manifests itself in and through all creation, but is not absorbed by its creation. Do you believe that? Because that's what this teaching is. Do you believe in the individualization of spirit in each person and that all people are individualizations of the one spirit? Do you believe that? Do you believe in the internality, the immortality, and the continuity of individual souls forever and ever expanding? Because just because we peel, when we peel this off, it's still not done for us. Our spirit moves on. So what legacy are we going to leave? What pearls of wisdom are we going to leave? And that's us practicing and pouring it in right now. Not waiting, because if not now, then when? Do you believe that heaven is within us and that we experience it to the degree that we become conscious of it? Do you believe that? Do you believe the ultimate goal of life is to be a complete freedom for, from all discord of every nature and that this goal, goal is sure to be attained by all who seeks it? Do you believe in the unity of all life and that the highest God and the innermost God is the one God? We believe that God is personal to all who feel this indwelling presence. Do you believe that? Do you believe in the, the, the direct revelation of truth through our intuitive and spiritual nature, that anyone may become a revealer of truth who lives in close contact with the indwelling God? Do we believe that? Do we believe in the healing of the sick and control of conditions through the power of mind? And we're going back to when we say all of this that's going on in the world is based on our consciousness, our input into the world. We're placing seeds, planting seeds every time we think, every time we speak. We're releasing a seed in the universe and it will not return to us void. Good, bad, or indifferent? Do we believe in the internal goodness, the internal loving kindness, and the internal givingness of life to all? Do we believe in our own soul, our own spirit, and our own destiny? For we understand that the life of all is God. Do we believe that? Everything is spiritual, therefore everything is spiritual practice. Sit at the table of awakening recognizing and spiritually growing. Thank God for those that caught the light of truth, embodied it, shared it, and continue to pass the baton. And in closing, I want you to hear this song by Donald Lawrence. It's called Speak the Word, One Word Away. One word away, one word away, the power of life and death is in what you say. One word away, if you start confessing, you will start possessing. The key to your success is one word away. You can possess the best of the best, and yes, if you confess, it could be yours, unless you don't believe. We got faith and we speak life, because I see prosperity, greatness all over you. Just speak, and then God will start showing you. 
Your ministry is built on faith. Your talent's about to be booked 12 months straight. See, certain levels was unreachable, but if you just speak your word, let the word do the work. I speak healing. Prayer is the answer. The doctor said there's no more cancer. I speak increase so you could live, set free, forget how the economy is. I speak your family members locked in jail, new trial, second chance. My God, don't fail. Blessing, purchase possessions by faith. Just make your professions one word away. The power of life is in what you say. Seek the word, speak the word to life. It's in a book, read the verses twice. You can possess the best of the best, but you must and can and should confess. One word away. If you start confessing, you will start possessing. I speak new homes, affordable mortgages, acres of land. The Lord, I will speak. A new job that doubles my salary. I believe God will make it reality to sow a seed and reap the harvest. It's in the word. I'm blessing you regardless. I speak a new car, whatever you send to me, but let the gas prices drop tremendously. <laughs> Lord, I speak. You bless me abundantly. Give me the strength whenever the enemy comes for me. I will pass this test. This is God's work at its best. I'll speak wealth in your life, health in your life, for the pain you felt in your life. Break out and let God break in. Just watch the places and God will take you. It is only one word away. Peace and blessings.